Hello and welcome to my morning note. Let's talk about the banks. After all, everyone else is. Earlier this week we had the great drama of Bob Diamond's forced resignation from Barclays over the LIBOR fixing scandal. It was obviously very dramatic, but it's not just about Bob Diamond, it's not just about Barclays, and it's not even just about the LIBOR scandal. The whole issue has brought back into the debate the notion of whether banks have simply become too big and whether bankers are paying themselves too much. After a period when it seemed that banks had avoided uh, a great re-regulation after the Lehman bankruptcy, it does now seem that radical moves to restructure the sector, maybe force banks as bankers to pay themselves less, are back on the agenda. With me now to discuss all of this is uh, the FT's contributing editor, John Plender. John, thanks for, for being here today. Um, in the case of Barclays, how good a case is there that Barclays is simply too big? I think that uh, one of the things that emerges from this is that uh, Barclays and indeed other large banks are not only too, too big and too interconnected mm. to fail, but probably too big to manage. Uh, it's a real question about whether boards right. of banks have a proper understanding of what's going, going on down below, and even whether top executives are fully aware of what's happening below, although we can't prejudge how far Bob Diamond may or may not have known about this particular scandal to do with right. LIBOR. Now, is, is that, now, that has the aspects of both scale and complexity, doesn't it? Is it? Both that it's too big and that there's too many different moving parts. Indeed. And it's a curious thing that in banking, everybody seems to accept that conglomeration is mm. all right, that what are very different businesses, investment banking, commercial banking, retail banking, uh, can be put together on the assumption that there are synergies, whereas in fact there's a lot of academic research to suggest that banks are valued at substantially less than the sum of their parts and that, that, that there are few benefits from conglomeration. Okay, now let's take a look at the course of earnings, because this is another argument that banks simply uh, make too much money uh, and displace other economic activity. This shows you the course of uh, uh, US banks' earnings going back to 1973. Uh, are banks earning too much, as this chart certainly makes would lead one to believe? Well, I think the important thing about this chart is it's showing you figures that are essentially meaningless in the sense that they're not risk-adjusted. Right. Sure. Um, it, what uh, people tended to think before the financial crisis came was that there had been a productivity miracle in banking. Right. But now we know that far from being a productivity miracle, uh, most of the, 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 the profits in this period where you see the, the graph yes. shooting up were, were unreal. They were derived from, first of all, leverage, secondly, from mark-to-market -market accounting uh, right. having a sort of pro-cyclical effect on earnings, and thirdly, that the banks in their structured products were actually writing deep out-of-the-money options. In effect, they were, they were doing catastrophe insurance. Right, so I in effect, this shows that they were taking more risk, uh, and what was different was that everybody was allowing them to take more risk. Absolutely right. So um, we need, therefore, to make sure that we don't allow them to do that again. Now let's take a quick look at the issue of uh, too big to fail. Um, this shows you countries from the Eurozone and the US and the proportion that banking assets make uh, of national GDP, obviously in the case of Ireland that set itself up largely as an offshore financial centre, banks are vastly bigger, uh, vastly too big for Ireland to be able to, to save them. How big is the too big to fail problem? How, how can it be dealt with? Well, I think uh, it's, extremely, it's extremely difficult to deal with the too big to fail problem. Mm. Essentially, what needs doing is to break up the banks uh, and also to have a much more active competition policy. Mm. But of course, uh, to start talking about a more active competition policy in, when you're in a financial hurricane is a little difficult. There's a sort of sequencing, <laughs> sequencing right. issue here. But at the same time, I think that uh, not enough of the debate so far has been about the case for breaking up the banks and indeed for thinking of going back to some kind of Glass-Steagall division between investment banking and retail banking. And it should at least be possible, shouldn't it, to, uh, to put that onto the timetable, put, to start the timetable to make it clear that that's the direction we're heading in, even if we're not ready to engineer cuts. Now. Well, I think that's uh, Barclays does provide a catalyst for us to start thinking that really, uh, mm -hmm. if you take the UK, the Vickers Commission has put this case that there should be a ring fencing of retail banking. How far that addresses the problem of too big to fail uh, is, is moot. But, but what I think now the Barclays uh, uh, affair is push us, pushing us in the direction of is reopening the question about whether we shouldn't be doing something much more fundamental about splitting or breaking up these big conglomerate banks. Okay, John, thank you very much indeed. I think the takeaway 
there will be an awful lot of noise and politics about this, but the most important question is what in the long term we are going to do to make the banks smaller.